All right, what's up and welcome to my live unboxing of the Zephyrus M16. Let me go ahead and just set this to public, make sure the audio is good real quick. Uh, very good. We are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to public and then we will be live. Okay, so uh, today's agenda is gonna be a little bit different than normal. Um, in the bottom left, uh, let's see here, if I go to this view, you can see the agenda there, in the bottom, I guess it's technically that one direction, um, or like right, right there, okay. Um, so we're going to do an overview of the laptop, um, so there's going to be a general spec overview, then we're going to uh, compare, uh, check out some comparison laptops that you might consider buying instead of this one, um, and then we're going to unbox this guy. We're gonna open the bottom up if we can. We're gonna try to open it. If it's easy enough to open, we'll open it up. Uh, we're gonna test the flex out, build quality, screen hinge, um, push around the laptop, test that all that out, test the keyboard, test the trackpad. We'll evaluate the ports. We're gonna update the drivers, get Windows updated. We're gonna try Time Spy, Cinematch R20, and Cyberpunk 2077. That's the goal for this video. And I will add timestamps uh, so that you can jump around through the VOD and find different areas. Uh, but that's roughly the outline of the stream for today. So let me just make sure that uh, looks like some people are hopping into the stream. Um, and then we will get into our comparison overview of, uh, we're gonna do the overview of this laptop first. And then we're going to look at some alternative laptop options in the ballpark of 1850. Did I see the new Asus Dragon laptops? Let me just inter interact with chat for a moment as people hop in. Um, let me know if there's anything wrong with the stream, everyone. But uh, but yeah, this is this is exciting. Um, I'm I'm excited about this laptop mainly because this laptop pushes the boundaries of what a thin and light laptop can potentially do. You know, this thing is a little bit over four pounds and it's a little bit smaller than a 17 inch display, 16 by 10 display. Um, and it has a lot of performance potential, but really this is a laptop that's primarily focused around portability and thinness while still delivering a very large display uh, for people that want like a little bit more of a blend of largeness with portability. Um, and definitely have reduced TDP, so less overall performance than you'll get in some of the thicker machines out there. What's up, Todoroki? All right, let me look up this uh, Asus Dragon that you're talking about here. Asus Dragon laptop. I don't know, you'll have to, uh, I have not seen an announcement for it. If you, If it's pretty cool, let me know uh, where to check that out. So uh, yeah, L Ranger says, should I keep my G15 3070 or exchange it for the M16 3060? Best Buy doesn't have the 3070 model or the Razer Blade 14 3070. Um, so Best Buy, I think, has the Razer Blade 14 3070 for, I think, 2199. Um, and then the as far as the Zephyrus G15 3070 versus the M16 3060, we'll get a, a better idea of the performance after we get through some testing. But I'm thinking this will be a little bit lower performance than the Zephyrus G15 series because it's in a even thinner profile than the Zephyrus G15. Or we'll be able to actually see it because I've, well, I can't use, I can't show you Carla's Zephyrus G15. <laughs> Carla's using the Zephyrus G15 right now. And uh, so I can't show this side by side, but maybe uh, I will in a review if I ever get around to reviewing this sucker. I plan on doing a live benchmarks of this machine um, and then also doing a, uh, so doing this live unboxing, live benchmarks. And if I find this machine interesting enough, I will also do a review on it. But I'm gonna try to get most of my opinion out in the live streams probably. Uh, K1 says, bro, this is so expensive. Yeah, so this is definitely a more expensive laptop than average for an RTX 3060. So you're definitely um, paying some of the premium tax on this machine because of the QHD 16 by 10 display, it's super thin and it's an Intel processor. So all of those things are gonna add some cost into this machine. Um, and I think, did this one have a webcam? I think this one had a webcam too. We're gonna go over all of that. So let's start out with some alternative 
laptops around this price point. So you can see the agenda in the, the right there. Um, if you guys want to check out what we're going to be doing today. But uh, right now we're going to do an overview of the Zephyrus M16. And then we're going to compare, uh, take a look at some competitors to this around this price point. So like the Zephyrus G15, um, some of the other thin ones uh, that are fairly light. And then all one or two larger ones too. Like I think I've got, got four laptops queued up for comparison. Um, we're not going to do detail, just quick kind of alternative suggestions that you can look at for this laptop. Okay, so let me pull up the website and then I'll switch over to the browser. All right. Okay, so this is the Zephyrus M16. Um, it's right there. It's right there on the screen. So the nice thing about this is definitely screen to bezel ratio is insane on this laptop. Um, covers nearly the entire bottom to top bezels. So the very little top bezel lip and a little bit on the sides. And then the bottom, it looks like it's flush, at least if you're looking kind of low at it. Um, now, this is going to have an i9-11900H CPU with liquid metal and an I, uh, RTX 3070 up to a 3070. I don't know. I don't think this thing comes with a 3080 model. Let's take a quick look. I think it's 3060 or 3070 only. So if you look at the different builds here, we've got 3060, 3050 Ti, and a 3070. Those are our three options. I don't think there's any other builds currently besides those. Um, so looking through the specs, all three come with the i9-11900H processor. Um, this is like a weird i9 because I'm I'm thinking we may see less performance out of this than we will out of an i7 11800H with a higher TDP, but we don't know yet for sure. Now for our GPU, this RTX 3060 is going to be an 80 watt with up to 95 watts of boost, uh, at least according to the website. And the 3050 Ti model will be 60 to 75, and the 3070 model will be 80 to 100 watts. So we got a bit different wattage for each model in this unit. Uh, now we have 165 Hertz, three MS response rate with 100% DCI P3 color gamut, 16 by 10, 16 inch display. That should be a very, very nice display. Can't wait to check it out in person. Uh, looks like 16 gigs of DDR4 on board, it says, max capacity of 24 gigs. So not sure exactly what that means for the RAM setup. Maybe it's one soldered, one swappable DIMM uh, for our RAM. Not sure yet. Uh, then this says two terabyte PCIe. This says one terabyte, two terabyte. So does this have two terabytes of space in it? I think this is just one terabyte. Yeah, this is a one terabyte. So, and then for our ports, we've got a headphone jack, HDMI 2.0B. So this is not one that you could display to a 4K 120 Hertz display, but 4K 60 Hertz is okay. Um, and then we have a display port out here. Now you can use this display port out to display to that 4K 120 Hertz display if you need to. Um, this also has power delivery. So with our USB-C, you get power delivery to charge the laptop. We have a micro SD card reader, an ethernet port, and then we have two USB-As. One's a Gen 1, one's a Gen 2, but they're both 3.2, so they're very fast. Uh, and then we also have a Thunderbolt 4 with display port and power delivery as well. So Basically, two USB-Cs, if you will. Thunderbolt 4 is the same as the USB-C for the plug-in. Um, but Thunderbolt 4 just means it has uh, certain data speeds. And, for example, you could use like uh, external GPUs with the Thunderbolt 4 certification and uh, other like higher speed things. Though USB-C can, in theory, be as fast as Thunderbolt 4. It depends on the USB-C. Um, usually, USB, I think, 4 is what would be considered the same as Thunderbolt 4. I, so I thought it's all the top, that's all off the top of my head. So, um, okay, checking out chat here. Sorry, guys. Uh, is laptop with 2070 still super good buy? Um, it all depends on your price, Vipul Kumar. I made a video comparing RTX 2000 versus RTX 3000 laptops. Go check that out. Go check that out if you want more details because I, I did kind of like a, a technique or a guide on how you can estimate whether a 2070 super laptop would be worth it or not depending on the price okay minnesota style says i was able to make um uh, minnesota style says i was able to make a laptop make a decision on a laptop because of your in-depth reviews i ended up getting the strix advantage edition thanks gizmo okay so i'm glad you uh i'm glad you found a laptop that you love i can't wait to do my full detailed testing and benchmarking of the strix advantage edition um it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty epic okay Hey, was the Lenovo Legion 7 
gaming performance. How was the Lenovo Legion Seven gaming performance? It was pretty good for the uh, for the fact that it's a thirty sixty, but it it's just kind of expensive for a thirty sixty. So that's kind of the downside of it. Um, you're paying for those premium features because it was seventeen hundred dollars for a thirty sixty. So, um, and the same thing is going to be true of this one, right? Definitely paying a bit of a premium on this machine. Um, let me grab, let me let me go ahead and hop into our first comparison. Um, now, this is the actual unit that I have for review. I bought this from Best Buy. Uh, so eighteen forty nine currently sold out, but there is a link in the video description, um, and this has come in and out of stock a few times since it was released. Um, so let's see here. Like I said, we, I've already went over the specs, but it's supposed to be. 500 nits QHD, 165 hertz refresh rate. That's, I can't wait to check that out, seriously. Um, and then 4.19 pounds. That's that's huge. That's a huge part of this. And we have a built-in HD webcam. So one of the few Asus laptops that has a webcam. All right. Now, one of the top competitors with this machine is going to be the MSI GP66. This is going to be a bit thicker of a machine. It'll be about a pound heavier. And then it'll be much more gaming focused. So if you're looking for a more gaming focused laptop, I recommend checking out my review of the MSI GP66. It'll probably help you see the performance gains. I'm guessing you'll have much better performance with this laptop than with the M16 as far as pure gaming performance. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a better laptop for you. That'll depend on each person, right? Now we also have the Omen 15T. This laptop is really interesting because you can get it configured a bunch of different ways right now, and it's $150 on sale right now. So uh, there's a, by the way, there's a link in the video description down below to my RTX uh, or my gaming laptop comparison spreadsheet. This is where you can find links to all the laptops I'm talking about. Um, and so uh, I've designed this spreadsheet to be sorted by price. So if you have a $1,500 price point, you can just jump down to the $1,500 range and start shopping between all the laptops that are on the market. Um, and I check, I don't know, this, has, this has gotta have like 97% of the laptops on the market. There's a few listings, few listings I'm missing right now. I need to go through and do another sweep through all of the Best Buy listings and Newegg and try to just make sure this list is as up-to-date as possible. But uh, the vast majority of the laptops are in here um, from manufacturers to retailers to a lot of third-party stores. I do not check all of these stores, but these are a bunch of uh, reputable stores you can also check out for stock and availability. Um, and these lists of top laptops are currently out of out of stock are uh, out of date. I need to go through and update these lists. I, I made a rankings list of all the different laptops for different categories. I need to go through and update that. I haven't updated it in about two months probably, so some of those definitely are out of date. Um, okay. That spreadsheet is OP. Thanks, bro. We will be buying through your link as soon as Legion 5 Pro or Legion 7 become available. Cool, man. I don't have any links or only, only a couple links for those laptops currently on the sheet. I don't, um, and I don't think any of them are affiliated links, but that's okay. Um, but I appreciate you looking out for me. I, I really do. I, and I also want to thank everyone. Thank you so much for all your support um, and sticking around. This has been a rather crazy journey lately um you know like with the I, I feel like i've never had like i mean i've had like i had a big channel of th over three million subscribers still do um gizmo slip but and i definitely had some some fans that were there that really enjoyed my content but i feel like this time there's definitely some it's like a different level of enthusiasm i guess and i just really appreciate all your enthusiasm all you guys out there that watch the videos and comment. Um, it does help keep me going when I feel stressed out or feel like I want to give up or something. And it's like, uh, I can't, I need to get back out there. Keep making videos. You know, people want to see it. Um, so I really appreciate all of that. Appreciate your support. So thank you guys. Um, okay. Uh, Viet Nugent. Hey guys, can you, I don't think I said your name right. Sorry, Viet. Uh, hey, Kiss, can you check whether your M16 unit gets hot when idle? Uh, yeah, we'll check that out when I'm doing some testing. So, uh, Alienware X17 review. I have to get the X17 in first, and I'll probably try to do a live unboxing 
of the X-17 the same day I get it, but it'll probably be early in July before I get it. So, okay, let's dive back into some comparisons. So let's just, uh, so Oris 15G, this machine is uh, one of the other really good banks for the bucks. Um, laptops out there, especially for a mix of gaming and portability. Um, I really like the build quality on this. It's still very portable uh, and it's got reasonable performance. The Oris 15G, uh, you can get it for $19.49 after a $200 rebate card, which is just really, really good. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, so if you need a lot of RAM, that's great. And it has an RTX 3080 for $19.49. Uh, there is, again, links to this in the video description on the spreadsheet in the sales section. So I have updated this sales section right here. Um, there's been a number of sales, um, including this one I just added, uh, the Strix G17 for $1680. Uh, this is currently out of stock, but available for future delivery. So if you're looking at the Strix G17, this would be a, an option. This is only going to be, it says for three days only. Um, and you can order it and it, and they'll ship it to you when it comes available. Because um, it's currently, their their active current stock is sold out. But I did a review on this unit. Um, and it's very impressive overall machine, especially it's $100, $120 discounts. First time I've seen that laptop on sale anywhere. Um, okay, so are those, I think, I, I think the Zephyrus G15 would be the only other major competitor let's let me just pull that up uh well not there's there's obviously more there's the legion 5 pro and legion 7 those are obviously potentially interesting um and then this one is the exact same price the zephyrus g15 um and it's a very similar build and style of design but the main thing that this one has an advantage is that uh, for the same price you're getting a RTX 3070 instead of an RTX 3060. And you should have a pretty noticeable bump in gaming performance and increase in gaming performance, especially if you're gonna play at the full QHD resolution. So if you're looking for a little more gaming performance and a similar-ish style build, this one would be a good option, but this one doesn't have a webcam. It's a big difference, I think, for a lot of people. And then it's not a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and the display will not be nearly as bright. The display on the M16 should be a lot brighter with 500 nits on the brightness. So, okay. Uh, is that, that's for, that's it for the quick comparison. Um, if you want more comparisons to take a look at, I recommend taking a look at uh, my spreadsheet again, because it should be uh, much more thorough because uh, I'm trying to do this, you know, quickly live. And yeah, so that's what I would recommend this. Uh, please tell it's good deal, $23 for GP66. Uh, yes, I think that is a good deal, uh, Razard. I think that if you're looking for a moderately portable, high-performance machine, the GP66 is right up there with the very best. Um, but uh, just keep in mind that in general, whenever you go to a 3080, you are going to pay more money for the same performance, right? Because you're just, anytime you go up to the top tier, you're paying a little bit of extra premium with a, a smaller gains like RTX 3060 and 3070 will generally be slightly better bang for the buck most of the time. All right, let's get this unboxing underway. Best laptop under two thousand. Um, best laptop. I think you have to like specify more. Do you want performance? Do you want uh, premium? Do you want QHD resolution? In terms of pure gaming performance, going for something like a a high TDP thirty seventy or a medium TDP thirty eighty are kind of your best options. I think for pure gaming performance. But when you want to, when you factor in portability and how premium features, it becomes a lot harder to choose around that price point. So you, I, you really have to know more details about what you want in a laptop. Okay, there's the unboxing experience. And notice the lip does raise up to kind of present the laptop to you. I really like that. Does my Legion 7 3060 have slow stock RAM timings like a Jared Tech review? Yes, it does, I believe. Um, the, RAM, the RAM performance was not amazing with the Legion 7 uh, that I tested. 
But if you have questions on the Legion 7, I recommend going and watching my benchmarking uh, benchmarking video on it because I go in depth and talk about the pros and cons as we're benchmarking it. So, Can you tell me what good games, for example, PUBG PC, am I able to play on an M1 MacBook Air 7 core GPU? So um, my recommendation uh, would be if you're going to go with a MacBook Air for gaming, you're going to want to probably just do like like the GeForce Now game streaming service or some kind of game streaming service because you're, you're basically I, – I, I tried gaming on the MacBook Pro 13 M1 chip, um, and you can do a handful of casual games all right, but any kind of serious gaming is pretty rough. Like you could do like Bioshock, you know, games from a few years ago. So some of those will work actually fairly well. Basically, the games that have been ported to the iPad will run really well on the uh, the processor on the M1 chip. But all the other modern PC games basically just suck, and you have to do a game streaming service, and that will cause delay, and it does require a really good internet connection anytime you want to game then. Um, and that's why I could never consider buying an M1 as my main laptop. Does the Strix G7, G15 Advantage Edition perform better in games than the Legion 5 Pro if both have upgraded RAM and an external monitor? Um, it depends on which Legion 5 Pro you're talking about. but uh, And it'll depend on what game, too. The games, each game's performance will be drastically different. Okay, so uh, taking a look at the power adapter. Can you guys see this? Let me make sure you can see. Okay, man, you can do it. You can focus camera. Ah, I had it on manual focus, that's why. Okay, so you can see we got a 240 watt power adapter. This is uh, the same power adapter it looks like as my, uh, yes, undervolt something. We'll see how much time. We'll see how much time it is. The HX is overclockable. HS isn't. Kind of, but not really. Uh, let's see here. Are, is the stream working just fine? It looks like it is. Looks like the stream crashed on my side. But let me make sure. I'm going to refresh it. Okay. Here's the laptop. This thing looks... Very much like the Zephyrus G15, and it feels almost identical in the hand, too. Okay. Now, we do have a shimmery holographic pattern in all these little holes. Looks really cool. Um, it's not super obvious unless you catch the light at just the right angle, but it's not too hard to catch the light at the right angle, and it looks pretty cool when you notice it. Okay. There it is. There's the laptop. Let's take off the, the covering. Now, this keyboard looks and feels identical to the Zephyrus G15 keyboard. I think the layout is exactly the same. The key travel feels the same. Feels good. I like that keyboard. All right, let me go ahead and try firing it up here. Uh, and let me put the stuff back in the box real quick. Okay, yeah, wow, that's a very bright and vibrant display. I really like that. Speakers sound clear. <laughs> it looks like uh, the stream did go down for a moment, but it's back. 
Okay, so let's get any backlight bleed. It's hard to tell unless you're in a darker environment. I'm sure there's some. Well, every laptop pretty much has some. Um, okay, let's do our flex test. Oh, yeah, that, that trackpad feels great, just like the Zephyrus G15 trackpad. Smooth. It's got a good click that feels solid, like you're in control. Let me, I'll move the, I'll move the, the camera here in a moment, but let me just get logged in so we can get updates going. Any solution except gloves for the fingerprints? I don't know. Um, let me just, my hands are a little bit oily. Let me just see. Let's take, let's try a little fingerprint test here while we're and fingerprint and flex test. Here we go. All right. So you can see there's, there is some fingerprint oil kind of, it's kind of a matte texture. So it's not easy to see the fingerprints, but I imagine if you especially oily fingerprints, it's definitely going to show up a bit, but the matte texture definitely helps prevent the fingerprints from being as pronounced, I think. Um, it's really hard to clean the fingerprints in the keyboard area. Mm, that may be true. Okay. Let me uh, just log in again here. Just go like that for a moment. Okay. And so let's, let me keep pushing around the keyboard here. Um, so the flex test, definitely some flex by the keyboard uh, space bar, like in between the touchpad here. It's probably one of the weakest areas, uh, though not very many laptops, you don't usually push very hard with it. So, uh, but it's a common weak point in most lap common weak point in most laptops um, going around the sides feels very solid just like the Zephyrus G15 um, and I do like this like texture feels feels very nice um, let's go ahead and do the fingerprint setup so setup it's going well it's recognizing my finger Now try another angle. Okay. We try in more angles. There it goes. Cool. Um, so once again, um, I really like the fingerprints sensor on the Zephyrus G14. It works. It worked pre pretty consistently for me as long as my finger was dry, and I did it from the correct angle and the right amount of pressure. So it's like it's important to do all of those things. Like you can't have a wet finger because it messes up the reading, and then uh, it needs to be the the correct angle and everything. So does this have a mic switch? Uh, I don't think so. But I have not uh, been able to go into the Asus Armory crate yet. But I'm pretty sure it does not. Have I tested the i9 11900H before? No, I have not. So I'm very curious to see how it performs. We can read your future through your fingerprint. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless it's good. Is my future good? Let me know. <laughs> Hey, I just got my ROG Strix G17 with 3060 and Ryzen 9 2900HX today. Congrats, Pluto. You liking it so far? Have I tested the 3050 Ti and 3050 laptop GPUs? I have not yet, Carson Wolf. Um, but from all the benchmarks I've seen, they 
seem not amazing unless it's less than a thousand dollars like if you can get one like a 3050 ti for like 900 bucks maybe a thousand dollars maybe it would be worth it but a lot of the 3050s and 3050 ti's i've seen have been listed for like really expensive i'm like how do you expect to sell this a 3050 or 3050 ti for 1300 1400 dollars like that does not make sense like i, I don't yeah a little bit overpriced on those uh do you think it would be a good do you think that it would be at the same level as the lenovo legion 5 pro um i think you're talking about uh what are you talking about the, what is the same level sorry if i missed missed your previous question uh best laptop for under 2000 more performance oriented like render shift stuff and high-end gaming and somewhat slim in physical body and a good display that's hmm I would say take a look at the Alienware M17 R4, probably would be one a uh, good laptop to take a look at if you're looking for performance oriented, uh, or if you're looking for a 15 inch chassis, the M15 R4 would be another good option for around two thousand uh, dollars. If you get, especially if you get the model with advanced optics. Um, okay, that display looks awesome. It looks really, really good. Um, I can tell it's just like, like right here, it's just like really bright in my, like <laughs> it's brighter than my scar 15 for sure. Ishan Patel with the super chat. Thanks so much. Uh, best laptop around one to 1 1.2 thousand us with 100% SRGB and RTX 3000. Um, I would say, take a look at the, uh, HP Omen 15 T that's on sale. They have a model with an RTX 3060 for 1,049. There's a link on my RTX 3000 spreadsheet. That would be a good one to consider. I think the Omen 15Z would be one to consider. Um, around the $1,100 price point, uh, Omen 15Z, Omen 15T, Gigabyte G5. Um, and then it kind of jumps up in a lot in price. I mean, you could look, you could take a look at the Asus Tough Dash F15 if you don't need as much CPU performance. Um, you also have uh, a Legion 5 with a Ryzen 7 5800H RTX 3060, uh, decent. But the if you want good screen, a decent screen for around that price, the Omen series should have 100% sRGB or close to it, like over 90%, 144 hertz with no ghosting. So good display with moderate TDP. It's not the highest performance ever, but it's good for the price point. Okay. All right. So let's keep, let's keep going here. All right. Um, wow. That is really interesting. So the 16 by I'm used to the Zephyrus G15 and it's just noticeably taller on the display. It's like, uh, I would like, it's like, I look down and I have to look down more. I kind of love it. It's really cool. Okay, let's see here. So we have two. Let's, let's evaluate the ports. I think that's what's next here. Let me try to get Windows Update going, and then we'll evaluate the ports. All right. Looks like we can install now, and we'll hit download and install. Okay, so looking at the ports, let me... Oh, hold on. Camera looks like the camera went out. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the battery goes out if I don't plug it in. So, cool, we're back. Will you benchmark games at the very end? I hope to run Cyberpunk 2077 at the very least. Um, and we'll do a Time Spy instead of Bench. Um, you can see the agenda for the unboxing um, in the bottom left. Okay, so we're going to turn this to autofocus mode. Okay. 
And let me just go ahead and make this a little, a little bit less deep on the bokeh. All right, so for our ports, we have our headset port right here in the very front. Uh, let me get one more light over here. So it's, it's pretty dark. Or you know what? There we go. That should be it. That should be good. Okay. So it's ramping the brightness a bit. Okay, so right here we have our uh now right here we have our headset port. We have our USB C with display port. Then we have our Thunderbolt 4 with USB C uh and display port. And then it all, both of these also have power delivery. So if you need to charge your laptop, you can charge your laptop right there. We've got USB A. Our Ethernet port, HDMI 2.0, our power port, fan exhaust here on the left. We have, whoa, this thing folds all the way back. We have another fan exhaust, our LED status lights, another fan exhaust right there. And then on the right side, we have our lock port, micro SD card slot, and another USB A. Uh, Noted, Grandpa, I'm not going to ship anyone, any laptops outside the USA custom duty free because that would be illegal. Sorry, man. Um, so these ports are a little bit too cranked for me. Um, I mean, I believe you mean cramped for you. Yeah, they are kind of close. But the biggest problem I run into with USB A's is that when they're next to each other, because USB C's are easy to uh, put in next to each other. Now, I, I like that we at least have one USB A on the left. Overall, these ports are solid. I wish we had a full-size SD card slot, and I wish the HDMI was 2.1. And I wish we had one more USB-A. I like three USB-As on my laptop. But overall, these ports are solid, and I much prefer side ports than rear side ports, like on the Legion series. Okay, so we're ready to restart our Windows updates. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What else is on the overview? We've got to take the bottom off. So we've tested the keyboard. Feels great. Feels just like the Zephyrus G15 keyboard. We tested the trackpad. Feels great. Great overall. Click. And you can even click it at the top. At all the way to the very top, you can click. It's a little bit harder than at the bottom. But uh, you can still click it even at the very, very top, which is rare for a Windows trackpad. Um, we've evaluated the ports. So I think we just need to up, uh, open the bottom. We're updating the drivers now, but we'll, once we get back into Windows, and we'll shut it down and, and we'll go ahead and get ready to, uh, let's go ahead and get ready to open up the bottom of this laptop. So what this is doing right here, um, this is a BIOS update. Asus has this done through Windows updates, which is really cool. But this will allow you to update to the latest version just pretty much automatically. You just hit yes, and it uses like this, uh, downloads the BIOS and upgrades it for you automatically. So we're updating the BIOS right now with like very little effort. I love it. Do you think the hot air coming out of the laptop will damage the screen? Um, I don't think so, Vic. I think it's it's not a big, big problem. Legion 5 Pro or M16? I think the main question there is how thin and light do you want the laptop? Because the M16 is uh, very thin and quite a bit lighter than the Legion 5 Pro. But the Legion 5 Pro offers a bit more performance, you know? So it's kind of like a give or take, I think. In my country, the Zephyrus M15 with the i7 1750H and 1660 Ti is 1150 US. Is that is it, it is one of the cheaper 1660 Ti laptops in the country? Is it worth, especially with 350 
Ti laptops coming. I think it depends on the price of the 3050 Ti laptops in your uh, in your market, the same because uh, that would be an expensive 1660 Ti in the United States. I would not pay more than about a thousand ish dollars. I think for that, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably around around a thousand ish. I think at Best Buy right now, that exact model you're talking about is on sale for a thousand. So, um, yeah. Many people not knowing brick their device. I suppose some people, but you'd have to be pretty dense not to read the warning that says "Don't turn off your computer." I mean, literally, it says right there, "Don't turn off your computer." So. <laughs> What time is it here? Um uh, it is 10:24. So we're doing a bit doing a bit late late night stream action. All right, so this uh, we're, I'm going to do a little prep talk here for the uh, taking off the bottom. This is the iFixit toolkit. I have a link in the video description uh, of the live stream. Um, and this has all kinds of tools that are really useful for taking apart laptops. Um, I highly recommend having something like this because you're going to use this for the next 20 years. It's going to be really, really, really useful for you. Um, and uh, you can use these kinds of things right here to help you pry apart any laptops you own and do upgrades on them. Um, and then they have other tools in here, like uh, like plastic prying tools. These will help you take the laptop apart. Uh, and then you have a magnetic head here on this screwdriver, and it spins. So you can spin this and uh, and open up the, any laptop you have with all these different and heads right here. So, And it's useful for all kinds of tech, for taking apart uh, smartphones to laptops to desktops. It's, it's just a really useful thing to have. So especially if you ever plan on doing any kinds of uh, upgrades or updating to any laptop you own. The essential kit. Yeah, this is like an all-in-one kit. I used to have like two separate kits, one for prying, one for opening with all the screw heads. But uh, I like having it all in one. And then this is just a better kit than I've ever had before because of the, the way it's all set up. It's just really, really nice. Undervolting is accessible via the BIOS. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, does Alienware M15 R4 have heating issues? Uh, Alienware M15 R4, I'm sure it will run warm, but that's because they always push the performance to the limit of the thermals on it. And if you want to reduce thermal uh, temperatures, you can always uh, reduce the power limit and run it at max fans and you'll have like low temperatures. But most laptop manufacturers will set high enough TDPs to... Um, basically push the thermal limit of the machine. Asus is one of the manufacturers that typically does not do that. They, they typically run it actually at a lower TDP so you have better temperatures, um, but at the cost of reduced performance. So it's kind of a trade-off. Okay, fingerprint sign-in test. Here we go. Boom, one for one. <laughs> does this model have liquid metal cooling? Yes, it does on the CPU. Okay. Very, very cool. Now, um, one thing I want to point out is that we do have a light-up keyboard, and it is RGB. Let me turn the lights off so we can take a look at that. Okay, so as you can see, we have a, a single zone RGB, much like the Zephyrus G15, probably the exact same keyboard literally being reused. Um, looks bright enough to clearly see everything. We have secondary lights on everything, so we can clearly see all the symbols. I love that. Um, and I believe we can set this to just be all white backlight, which is my preferred method for lighting. Um, armory crate. Because I think, I think the, I don't know. I just don't like. I, mean, I like RGBs, but when it's a single zone, 
I think I just prefer to have it all be one. Okay. This looks interesting. Um, or a sink. Okay, so here we can just, if we want to, we can just set it to be static. And then we just select the color. And we can just set it to be white. Boom. There. Now we got a bright white keyboard. It looks just like, like a MacBook Pro, basically. I like that. They have three different brightness levels as well for the keyboard. So, cool. Let me turn the lights back on and let's take the bottom off. Shut this thing down. Okay. So, basically, this is like uh, very much like a Intel version of the Zephyrus G15. That's the way I would summarize this. Um, it's just costing a fair bit more, you know, which is the downside. Welcome to Intel, I guess you could say, because Intel usually prices their stuff more uh, out there in price. Okay. So... Looks like we just need a Phillips head for this. Um, then we'll just start in the top right. So one screw. Does the bottom of the screen get hot? Oh, I'm sure it would get warm. I don't know about hot, but it, it'd kind of be like a uh something was like a not quite like a what is it uh what are those things called i'm blanking on the name the uh <laughs> blow dryer yes a blow dryer kind of like a blow dryer from like maybe a foot or two away just kind of blowing on it but blow dryers get obviously way hotter so it's not really a good not really a good uh, metaphor. But for sure, the screen will have been designed to withstand those temperatures. I mean, if if they didn't, that would be a big deal. Like, it'd be a huge design flaw. Um, and they've been doing this kind of thing for many, many years where this screen takes the blowing of the, the air. Like, the old MacBook Pro design had that feature, like, back in 2005 when I owned one. It was designed very similarly, where you kind of the air just blows right on the on the lower part of the display. Am I going to review the Alienware M15 R6? I'd like to. Okay, so as per usual, the right bottom screw when it's upside down, uh, this is a pop-up screw. So this means that uh, this will give us a lip to stick our plastic tools in and pry it apart. So there it goes. So there's a little gap right here, which I'm going to use to pry it apart here. Any good stands for cooling? Um, yeah, there are lots of good stands for cooling. I think the main thing to look for when you're trying to get a stand for cooling is uh, you want something that will uh, you want something that will elevate the laptop. And be very stable. You don't want it falling over. And you don't want it to get in the way of the ports. So just kind of look for those things. You don't have to pay much, honestly, for a good laptop stand. Um, it's, it gets a bit more complex if you try to get an active cooling pad. But, uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and pop this open. See what's on the inside. So just take the tool here. Looks like you guys can't see what I'm doing. Let me change the angle a bit. Basically, I just stuck the tool in and went like that. We raised up this this side. And uh, let's go ahead and go along this corner now. Make sure that you can see this. Just like that. 
This is really easy to take apart. Um, I think I need to take out two more screws, actually. If I remember correctly, there is another screw in these rubber port, uh, rubber pieces right here. Okay. Um, and you don't really want to use a... You don't want to use a metal thing to take these little rubber bits out. But yeah, there's little rubber covers over these screws, so they're easy to miss. You don't want to try prying the bottom off without these screws out as well. Okay. All right. Cur hey guys, I currently own an M16, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. How are you liking it? <laughs> Is the fingerprint reader working consistently for you? Are you going to keep it? Okay, so there's those three screws up as well now. And voila. Boom. Okay. So there's the bottom plate. Uh, we'll just go like that. All right. So here's our battery. We have a 90 watt hour battery. We have our PCIe SSD slot right here. We have our second PCIe SSD slot right here. Um, let me make sure this is perfectly in focus. Let me just go ahead and put this up here. I like getting this shot from the top down. Because um, this also looks cleaner if I use it for uh, my actual review video than if it's in my lap. All right. Do a drop test, LOL. Um, Okay. Okay, so taking a quick look at the uh, the underside here, it's very much like the Zephyrus G15. Two PCIe SSD slots. We have our 90 watt hour battery. We have our swappable RAM, so one uh, slot is upgradable. Um, and then we have our heat sinks and pipes here, so a little bit thinner on these heat pipes, um, but the nice thing here is that uh, there's a lot of them. And there's three big shared heat pipes between the GPU and CPU to the two fans. And then we have a dedicated heat pipe over here to the CPU. And then we have another uh, heat pipe that goes for the GPU. So we kind of have four that's like two dedicated just to the GPU, like right here. And then we have three shared. So really the GPU has three full and two shared. Uh, well, sorry, let me just say two full. That's this one's kind of shared. So I guess one, let me repeat that one dedicated. And then this one is a dedicated heat pipe, but it's shared with this fan that also uses some of the CPU. So it's kind of like a weird one. And then we have three that are just fully shared across here. And I really like the number of heat pipes and the layout here it means we're going to be able to crank out the CPU performance, hopefully, um, and get some really good performance there. Okay. That looks like everything. Oh, we also have the Wi-Fi. Looks like it's covered up here. Let me see if I can take the cover back. Um, there it is. Okay. This is a MediaTek AWXB468INF. Very nice. Overall, it's very good. I think that heap, uh, top heat pipe covers the VRMs. Yes, this one is the VRM heat pipe right here. So, uh, but it's still it's still for the GPU. I still classify it as a GPU heatsink. All right. Very nice. Do you have any questions? Spec, please tell please tell the spec of this laptop. Uh, I did a uh, detailed overview of the specs at the beginning of the video. Uh, roof flat. So if you can go back and rewatch the beginning after the live stream if you want to know the specs, because I don't want to repeat myself. Okay, so putting the laptop back together, 
key here is uh, you want to, let me just take this off again. Like the reveal shot. Haha. <laughs> Was uh there now I got a spot shot for my review. <laughs> Don't have to reshoot it. Um, okay, so I recommend starting in the back here, probably going around in a circle, popping it in. Very nice, and then we want this last screw. The pop-up screw, we want to screw that in as well right away. Does it feel thicker than the G7, G15? Um, no, it feels exactly the same as the G15, honestly. Um, no, I can't put it next to the G15 because Carla's using it right now. She's using it for work, so. All right. Okay, so these three screws go in. <laughs> here, here, and here. All right. All right, let me also do a quick check to make sure that we're fully popped in so we don't have to take this apart again. Quick visual all the way around the edge, just to make sure. Yep, we're fully sealed tight. This Intel processor is better than any Ryzen right now. We'll see, I can't wait to test it out. These heat pipes give me hope. It's, it's basically, I mean, this laptop is Almost a carbon copy of the Zephyrus G15, but with an Intel CPU and a 16 by 10 display and a webcam. So a lot of people are going to really like that. But I'm curious if it's a carbon copy of performance as well. Like if you got the, uh, the 3070 version, would you get the same level of performance out of it as you do with the G15? We'll find out. This laptop did not have the power button problem as this Asus Advantage Edition, no. <laughs> this thing started up fine, no problems there. That was too funny. If you missed it, uh, during the Asus Advantage stream, live unboxing stream, I tried turning on the laptop and it wouldn't turn on. It was ridiculous. I thought it was broken. Uh, but uh, I think the battery had probably died in shipping or something and then you had to do a long hold to get it to turn on. It was like a 40 second turn on hold. Okay, so all of the screws should be in now. Just do a quick once over to make sure that we're tight on all of the screws. Very nice. I wanted these to be in correctly. They're not at the right angle. Must be at the correct angle. There we go. Um, <laughs> where'd the last little rubber tab thing go? Oh, no. I don't know where it went. I'll find it and put it back on there after the stream, I guess. Okay. Cool. What's the price for this sucker? Uh, this model costs eighteen forty-nine. Oh, right. Let's go ahead and try turning it on again. Boom! And notice that it did save the color scheme, so that when we turn it on, it's in the pure white color scheme. Wow, that booted up fast. That took. Seven seconds to boot up from completely turned off, something like that. 
right? That was that was that was that was pretty impressive. Um, okay. So yeah, I think this this so the way I would describe this laptop is uh, certainly more expensive than your average RTX thirty sixty. Okay, but you're paying you're paying the premium price for the uh, incredible display, the uh, the overall build, and and I don't know, like I mainly you're paying the premium price for the thinness, I think, and the portability, and the fact that it's an Intel CPU instead of Ryzen. You know, I'm so used to all of these prices for the Ryzen laptops. You know, the Intel comes along and it's like, okay, it's because we're gonna have to pay extra for these Intel laptops. Uh, you know, like it's just. It depends on the laptop, though, obviously, because some of them are very competitively priced. I did go over some uh, alternatives to this laptop at the beginning of the video. So if you're curious what other laptops I'd recommend around this price point, be sure to check that out. Okay, so let's continue with our Windows updates. And then... Continue with our Windows updates and check this out. This is a USB C. This is a USB C external SSD. I've upgraded. So now, hopefully, I don't have to download Cyberpunk 2077. It's already installed on here, and we just have to recognize the files. So. Hurrah. Does this have G-Sync? I don't believe it has G-Sync, but I believe it has FreeSync. Um, let's see. We can pull up the control panel. Yeah, there's no there's no G-Sync in here in the control panel. So, but it should have FreeSync. All right. So we have 3840 CUDA cores, a 95 watt maximum TDP, and. Uh, Eight gigs of V or oh wait, six six point one four four gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. And we have eight eight gigs of shared system memory as well that the video card can use if it needs to. So we need to get our drivers up to date and then files transferred over. We'll get tested. Why did the Asus Advantage not turn on? Uh, I think because the battery died during shipping and you had to do a really long press to get it to activate. Forty seconds, you have to hold it for for 40 seconds. Uh, yeah, and I would not recommend the MacBook M1 for gaming in general. Uh, if the, People who keep asking about the MacBook Pro or the MacBook M1 chip. I just, if you're if you want to do gaming in general, it's better to just not try for um, for the MacBook and M1 chip until Apple decides to prioritize gamers and support. You know, you basically get big game developers on board on on uh, supporting their GPUs, just like Nvidia and AMD Radeon GPUs. Live stream hype hype. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Sansar. Where can I get the RTX 3070 version? Uh, Ger German, I'm not sure. Uh, I've not seen it for sale in the US yet. Uh, but I'm really curious what the 3070 version costs for this machine and when it will be available. Because to me, that's probably the more attractive option because it's a probably a better bend of portability and performance, you know, kind of a better middle ground of the two. So we're installing Windows Update right here, and then we're installing NVIDIA drivers right here. Thanks for live streaming for this laptop. No problem, Flat. Appreciate you stopping by. Why is the M15 3070 the same price as this one with a 3060? Uh, so Sal, Sal G, I think you have to keep in mind that um, I think it mainly comes down to Intel and the feature set that this machine has. So the the main features that this one has, they may not be on another laptop around this price point. We've got a fingerprint sensor in the power button. We've got a webcam webcam up here. A lot of Asus laptops do not have that. We have a 16 by 10, 500 nit display. 
Um, we've got uh, an Intel i9-11900H processor. Those are the feature specs that you may not get in a, in a laptop, another laptop that costs about $1,800. So, and it's also extremely thin. Thin and it weighs a little bit over four pounds. So, if you're something, if you're looking for something with a large display that's thin and very light, very portable, and you want an Intel CPU, that's the reasons to buy this laptop potentially. But I'm pretty confident we're going to see some mm, not insane gaming performance. I, but I, that's what I'm expecting because we're we're talking about a lower TDP RTX 3060. My main curiosity for this machine is, uh, you know, how well does it perform with the i9 Intel CPU for gaming, CPU bound gaming, and then how good is the i9 um, in Cinebench and in other productivity type applications? Did I buy this laptop? Yes, I I bought this from Best Buy. the The exact link is in the video description down below. Um, Nathan Drake, uh, that you can get an M15 R4 with 32 gigs of RAM, RTX 3070, i7, 10870H, 1.5 terabytes of storage, 1080p screen with Advanced Optimus and G-Sync for $2,019. That sounds like a pretty solid deal. Um, that's a, that's a high watt RTX 3070. You got Advanced Optimus. I mean, <clears throat> especially if you play CPU bound games, that should be a pretty solid deal. Um, great gaming focused build, at least, or customization that you've got there. <clears throat> hey, can you please consider getting the Zephyrus S17 as well? Someone on YouTube overclocked the i9 inside of it, and Cinebench R20 score breached the 6,000 mark. Really? <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so we're updated on our drivers now. Let's go to my Asus and make sure my Asus has all the updates done. So in the My Asus section here, let me make sure that we're in focus and we get the screen so that way you guys can read everything. Well, this is such a bright display. Like it, it completely washes out the image when we have something bright, bright on it. Okay. Uh, let's go back into My Asus here. Wow, this is such a colorful display. I love it. If you're someone that really wants like a high quality display, this is clearly a pretty incredible machine for or pretty inc pretty incredible display. I believe it's the exact same display on um the same one that the Legion 5 Pro uses and the Legion 7. I think think 165 hertz 16 by 10 qhd option at least okay so we want to do um our upgrades updates here it is okay live update our v bios for our gpu needs to be updated so let's download that get that update done intel 11th gen is better for gaming um i definitely think that that's likely true for a lot of a lot of the games and i think part of that is the uh the pcie lanes and then also the potential ram speed if the games are ram sensitive um it just seems like a lot of the intel laptops are shipping with higher quality ram in the mix um at least the ones that i tested so far like the gp66 had good quality ram okay so the uh, vbios is done Windows update is done. We are ready to just go ahead and restart this system. What do I think about the Gigabyte uh, 17G 3080 11th gen? Um, it looked promising, but not very premium. Does that make sense? Like the, the Gigabyte 17G is just, it's not, um, if you're after the most performance per dollar, it's probably a worthy contender to look at. But if you want a blend of premium in the mix as well as performance, then I would look at probably at other 
better, you know, you'll get a better keyboard, better trackpad, probably, um, potentially a better display if you go with another laptop besides that. But if you're just primarily after the internal performance of the machine, that's where the Gigabyte laptops really shine, I think. Uh, especially for their price, usually. Which is best, Intel or AMD for gaming? Um, they're very close, Rufiat. I think it, but overall, I think Intel has a slight advantage in the major, uh, in more games. The Legion 5 Pro RTX 3070 is better than this laptop. Uh, it depends on the pricing of everything. But uh, in general, the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro will probably cost a bit less. And so it'll be better performance for your money. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a better laptop for you specifically. Because what if you need something that's really portable and light? You know, the Legion 5 Pro weighs more and it's thicker. Does it feel thicker than the G15? No, it feels it feels exactly the same, Arjun. Um, and I believe it's rated to be the exact same thickness too. Like this thing, I it may be the literal exact same shell, with uh with a different like an increased bezel height. But no, I can't put it next to the Zephyrus G15 because Carla's using it right now. I like the M16. It is expensive, but it is premium and light. Um, that's kind of the way I would describe it, uh, for sure. I want to see its performance before I can know whether or not I recommend it for people. But I think I think for I think it's probably not a laptop really that's designed for performance per dollar seekers, but it's a laptop that'll work really well for people that uh, don't mind sacrificing some performance in the sake of portability and premiumness. Uh, am I looking at doing the thermals with the fans blowing air to the screen? Um, I mean, I'm not sure what you mean, what you want me to test there, Khan, because I'm sure it'll get, I'm sure it'll, I mean, I can already feel, you know, the screen has a little bit of warmth on it, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I don't think it's a problem. Like, I don't think it'll damage the display, if that's your question. Uh where is it? Navigation panel. I don't know why Windows defaults sometimes now to um, not showing. There it is. I want this panel up at all times. Okay. All right. So here's our. Here's my external SSD. Let's see how well this works. Hopefully this works well to prevent uh, or to be able to just literally just install everything and run it straight off the SSD. Like I want to be able to play the games right off this external SSD. Why did AMD say the TGP was 145 watts for the 6800M? My Strix G15 Advantage says 115 watts. So Survival Builder, I think it can boost actually to 150 watts, but you need to play a game that's very GPU bound, not CPU bound at all. Like where the basically the the CPU is basically not at all being uh, pushed. Does that make sense? Like uh, like for example, in Time Spy, Time Spy would be a good example to try to run it and see what your GPU can boost to. Um, okay, let me pull up my confirmation code here. But what, when I did my tests with the uh, the the AMD Advantage for Time Spy, it was boosting. Um, it was saying that it was going to 180 watts, but I don't know if that was really correct. I think it may have been misreading it, but um, I believe Jared's tech measured it to be 150. Okay. So we should be able to recognize. Library. 
Where do we add Steam library folders? Add a library folder. Under C, we want to go to D. Steam library. Huh? It didn't work. Maybe I need to go in here. Oh. <laughs> Let me just can I be on the root track? Okay. So this is my first time trying to use this um We'll just call it Steam Library M16. Okay. Would you rather smile so hard that your eyes are barely open or laugh really hard when you see something that makes you want to laugh? What? <laughs> I would rather laugh really hard when I see something that wants to make me laugh, of course. How does the trackpad and keyboard compare to the Strix G15 Advantage Edition? Uh, it's very similar. Um, if, I would rate them about the same. Okay, so I've created this folder. Maybe now I can move all of these over to here. Boom. Okay, so all of these are in here now. Uh, I believe when we go to install everything now, it will recognize that we have it. Uh, it'll recognize and discover the files and update from there. What's up, Nerdy Dan? It's been a while, man. Welcome back. How's the build quality? It's just like the Zephyrus G15. I really like it. Um, everything purple. Hey, Brandon, how? I know that... The G15 M16 is advertised as a thin portable gaming laptop, but can you tell how much heavier a hassle is the SCAR 15 17 thickness? So I would say the SCAR 15 thickness is not much of a hassle difference. Um, it's And it's not a huge difference in weight. It's about one pound difference in weight, and it uses the same power brick. But the 17-inch version is a much bigger jump because it's a 17. It's a much larger, wider chassis and it does weigh i think closer to two over two pounds more so um it's definitely a lot more noticeable for like hauling in a backpack and taking around with you um alan says hey got the g or 15 g from that sheet love it thank you for the reviews i dig having the azure ai as an option cool alan i'm glad you're enjoying it i really i've been so what i've been doing is i've been using the or 15 g as my secondary laptop like when i'm playing games and i want to update the sheet or something um, sometimes I'll like, like, uh, do something like in, I've been playing a lot of black desert online lately again, and I've been, you know, I'll set my character to do something AFK or whatever. And then I'll like go start updating the sheet on the side and then I'll just like multitask with like two laptops and then I'll run a benchmark on this laptop over here and I'll have like three laptops set up going. Um, and I'll be playing a game kind of, and then <laughs> doing this other stuff all at the same time. It's awesome. Let's just go ahead and install um, these other tests as well. But yeah, my, basically what I was trying to say is the Aorus 15G has really impressed me with the keyboard quality, the backlight, the touchpad, the display, um, and the fit and finish feel of the laptop feels very, very good. Uh, and it's been very responsive and reliable so far in my, in my using of it. Okay. So here we are. Let's get um, next up. We need to install MSI Afterburner.
How many USB ports does the M16 have? Um, I went over the ports in detail a little bit further back in the live stream, probably about a half hour ago, um, if you want to check out the ports in detail. But it has two USB A's and two USB C's. But I went over the types and the speeds and the pros and cons of them a little bit ago. Been super busy with work, nerdy? Okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah, and Alan, thanks for the $5. I really appreciate the, the support. It really does mean a lot to me when people drop uh, super chats and stuff. It's like, oh, cool. That's like uh, a five for five from Wendy's. <laughs> if you don't know what Wendy's is, it's a restaurant in America, and they offer this deal that uh, I think it's like uh, five options. It's like a sandwich, fries, two sides and a drink so you get five items for five dollars so okay so setting up msi afterburner i believe we're looking at gpu one is the one we need to show on screen All right, I get our CPU temperatures, CPU usage, CPU clock, CPU power limit. Um, and then we're gonna get our frame rate, our average frame rate, and our 1% lows. Cool, and do that and do that. Okay. Looks like we have more updates to do as well. So we're going to get those updates done. Um, let me go ahead and get this set up. And we'll start with this with Windows and we'll start this with Windows. Cool. And let's check if Windows update is also up to date or not. We're almost, so Windows says we're up to date. Let's get live, my Asus says we need to do an update. Let's go ahead and get that update done and then we'll run time spy. Okay. My M16 time spy score is averaging around 7,700 on performance mode and 8,000 on turbo. I'm interested in how Gizmo scores. Yeah, I'm curious too. Um, I estimated, I think on my sheet, let me see. Um, so you can see here's the spreadsheet. This, you can check this out and linked in the video description down below. Um, so if you need to find a specific laptop or whatever, you can just hit Control F and then type in the laptop name. In this case, I'm typing in M16 and it pulls it right up right here. Um, but I'm estimating 7897. Oh no, this is this is an estimate. This is an actual benchmark. So 7897 right here. And I'm curious what the Cinebench is going to be. That's one of my biggest curiosities about this machine. All right. Hi. Hi. Carla just came downstairs. She must be on break. Okay, cool. We're back in. Afterburner should automatically start. We also want to make sure that Armory Crate is up to date. Is this a 17 inch screen? No, this is a 16 inch screen. That's why it's called the M16. Um, it's a 16 by 10. Why no undervolt? Um, well, we can check to see if it'll let us undervolt though. I don't think it's going to let us undervolt um, without going through the BIOS first. And if it requires going through the BIOS, then I'm not gonna do it during the unboxing. Maybe I'll do it at a later time. Can we upgrade the RAM with the M16? I showed taking the bottom off and you can upgrade one of the sticks. Um, you cannot upgrade both of them. Okay, so here's the armory crate. You can see 
We can, it shows us some of our stats, our temperatures, um, and we have our, our fan modes here. So we have silent, performance, turbo, and manual. On manual, we can set our fan speeds to be maximum, but you can also set a specific fan curve so that the fans go at a certain rate based on the temperature. Now it looks like for the CPU, we can do a short power limit of up to 135 watts. That's nuts. Um, and a long power limit of 60 watts, which is still good. That's still very good, actually. Um, I believe the long power limit is 54 watts in in uh, the G15. So, but uh, yeah, anyway, let's just, let's see what it actually does when we get down to doing the real tests here. This is not letting me go up. I was going to try hitting apply. Okay. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and just set max fans, max fans. Apply. Okay. We'll be able to hear the fans coming on. What is the point of undervolting? The idea of undervolting is to make your computer more efficient. That's the goal. So you make it more power efficient and it uh, produces less heat and can oftentimes speed up performance by about 5 to 10% in a laptop. Which is best for productivity? Um, I believe you're asking about Intel versus AMD. Um, they're very, very close at this point, but probably AMD by just a little bit for productivity, I think. Can I test Valorant? I will be testing Valorant um, in my live benchmarking video. That'll be a separate video than this one. So. Be sure to come back for the live benchmarks. We're going to test a whole bunch of games and benchmarks in a separate video. Okay, so we're max fans. We've got the basic overclock. So on the GPU, we've got a 100, 100 clock overclock, memory overclock. We have 150 overclock. This is the default ones. It should be stable, I think, probably. We're going to set it to a max fan, max fan. So we're running maximum fans at all times. We're gonna make sure Windows is set to our high performance profile. So turbo is fine, yep. And we're gonna close this now. We're going to uh, get HW info and run that. And then we are ready to go and run our time spy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, can I test heavy games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla? So I test a whole bunch of games when in my live benchmarks. Um, in this stream, I'll be doing Cinebench R20, Time Spy, and Cyberpunk 2077. And then I'll be doing a whole bunch more tests in a separate live stream. How is the webcam? We'll check that out, Harambe. We'll check out the webcam. Um, remind me so I don't forget. If you don't remind me, I'll probably forget. Does it matter if a gaming laptop doesn't have a MUX switch? Um, I think that depends largely on what games you play. Um, if you play, I just realized, GeForce Experience still haven't turned off the in-game overlay. So if you if you play GPU-bound games, especially at high resolutions, a MUX switch does not matter very much. But if you play CPU-bound games, even at QHD, you'll notice a performance improvement like smaller, but it's still it's still noticeable. So, uh, but if you pay if you play CPU bound games at 1080p, then I think a MUX switch is uh, much more much more essential. And I highly recommend a MUX switch for people that play at 1080p CPU bound games. And as far as I can tell, this laptop does not have a MUX switch. Which makes sense. Asus has not been running MUX switches at all in their laptops this year. All right. Here we go. Will I do a latency test on the in the benchmarks video? Um, I will. I think I am going to start including a RAM test um, to see what the RAM speed is as a standard thing in my benchmarks because I think I think that's a it's becoming a more and more important thing, right? Um, especially in the Ryzen laptops. Does this allow you to 
yeah, Aravind, I saw your question, but don't don't spam it. Um, otherwise, you'll get timed out um, by either the the bot or by Nerdy. Um, but uh, this does allow you to disable the dedicated GPU for extended battery life. So I'm anticipating probably 8 to 12 hours-ish in the battery range, depending on what you're doing. Um, obviously, you can kill it a lot faster than that if you play games. We don't have an overlay coming up for some reason. It should be on, though. What laptops this year have a MUX switch? Um, check my RTX. Uh, check my gaming laptops spreadsheet. I have uh, I have that information on there, so you can sort by. Uh, you can check out which laptops have a MUX, Advanced Optimus, or uh, Regular Optimus. And what you want for best CPU bound gaming performance is either a MUX, Advanced Optimus, or a Direct Connection. And I explain all of this in my video. Right there, I just did the command. Hopefully, Nightbot is still working, but it should um, it should come up with the command for a mux. Is is it working? I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> Silly Nightbot. There it is. Video on to mux switch. So check out that video if you're not sure what a mux switch mux switch is and what it does and why it's important. Um, that goes over some some uh, benchmarking examples and performance differences. Um, some pretty extreme ones. Uh, in certain cases, you can see up to like a 60% performance gain with a MUX switch. That's like a very extreme example. Most of the time, it's around a 10 to 15% difference for the majority of games at 1080p. Um, that's like how it averages out to, but some games are really sensitive and some games have like no difference. So very GPU heavy games like Red Dead Redemption and Cyberpunk basically have no difference, like 2%. And then very CPU sensitive games like CSGO are like can have like up to 60%. Um, I'll be testing Warzone in the live benchmarks uh, video or live stream roof yet. When am I coming back to do games live stream? I don't know, Britt. What... <laughs> I am actually tempted to, to live stream Black Desert Online because I've been playing that a lot. The problem is my voice goes out like after i do one of these live streams like my voice is like done <laughs> i just can't talk for forever and i'm like i've got to keep my voice save my voice for my job essentially which is this one you know which is these live streams return of the gaming <laughs> so evan nab um if i miss your question you can you can paste the question again uh, but you have to just wait. So, please reply to Mod Dib. Mod Dib. Hi, Legion 5 Pro RTX 3060 available in my region or G15 Advantage Edition. Waiting for availability. Mm. I think that uh, I think the G15 Advantage Edition will give you a lot more performance than the Legion 5 Pro with RTX 3060 if they're the same price. Okay. So there's our there's our score, 8105, 7977 for our GPU score. That's very good. But uh, I don't know why we didn't get our overlay to work. Looks like Afterburner didn't open. So let's try running it again with Afterburner on. This is set to start with Windows. I don't know why. Maybe Windows blocked it or something. But let's run it again. We want to see what our TDPs are. Uh, Dinner low nut a bit low. Uh, yeah, so this is this is right on par exactly with what what I was expecting for performance. Um, and the reason why it's a bit lower than other RTX 3060s is because it's a lower TDP on the GPU. It should be up to 95 watts, where others like the Legion Legion Seven can go up to 130 watts, or I think it was averaging about 128 watts in a GPU bound test. So, oh, wow. <laughs> Looks like our overlay is messed up. <laughs> Let me see if I can change the uh, settings and see if I can get that to work for us. Maybe make it a little smaller.
If I can't, then I'll just enable window mode and try to running it. True, but the CPU should have been on par with the 5900HX. Um, oh, yeah, for the CPU performance, what did we get? I think it was like uh, a little over 9,000 or something. Let me go back. 8920? Yeah, that is a little bit low. Low, a little bit lower than I was expecting, but I think I see. I don't really focus on the CPU score for Time Spy because I don't think it's a very reliable indicator of gaming performance. Uh, whereas I think the GPU score is very reliable. So for CPU bound games, um, I think it's a lot more. Uh, it's a it's for CPU bound games. I think there's so many more factors. Like, you, what does it have a MUX switch? We're hitting 95 watts, by the way. Um, so for CPU-bound games, I think there's a lot of other factors. Does it have a MUX switch? What's the TDP of the CPU when the GPU is engaged? Um, what generation is the CPU? Uh, how fast is the memory? Um, and then also, is the game engine optimized for Intel or AMD? Like, there's there's just a lot more factors when it comes to CPU-bound game performance that uh, the time spy CPU score just to me is not a very reliable indicator of almost anything. Um, whereas the GPU score is much more reliable as a rough estimate of what kind of performance you'll see in a lot of the different games and titles out there. Nice, nerdy. Um, Okay, Gizmo, you. What about touching, touch filling materials? M16 better than G15 or the same? Um, for the money, the Zephyrus G15 with an RTX 3070 is definitely going to give you more performance. So, now look at the our look at our temperatures. They're very low. 60 and 53. That's very, very good. Um, this is obviously not an extended load duration. We needed to actually test in some actual games um, and see what kind of temps we get over a long period of time and do a stress test as well. But most most laptops will ramp up to like 70, 80 degrees just in the time spy test. And the fact that we're staying down near 60 is really, really good sign. Aravind, uh, I don't know what, what what would you recommend for Unity gaming and streaming? RTX 3070 or 3060? Uh, I think that just depends on your budget more than anything and what other features you want with the laptop. Obviously, I'd recommend a 3070 uh, if you can afford it. But, you know, you got to balance, like, what kind of premium features, what kind of display you want with the performance that you'll pay for. Do I return the laptops after I test it? No, I, I resell them. Uh, or I keep them around to feature in future videos, one of the two. Lately, I've been keeping a lot of them around, um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm actually coordinating to sell a bunch of them soon. I checked the spreadsheet. That's why I'm asking about the Alienware and Thoughts. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to find your test. FRS, best laptop for under 1900 USD, solely for gaming. Prefer future proofing, powerful 3070 and CPU. Alienware M15 R4 3070 looks very good, but have you have you read the issues with their 3070 machines? Um, Afris, yeah, I think you're talking about the CUDA cores on the M15 R5, which is, I don't think that huge of a deal um, anyway. So what I, I think, I think the M15 R4 is an is not affected at all by that. So I don't think that's a big deal. And if for $1,900, I think the M15 R4 and the MSI GP66 are both right up there at the top for what you can get in terms of pure gaming performance um, if you're looking for primarily a gaming laptop. Okay, we scored a little bit less than that, interestingly enough, than last time. But it's still a pretty good score. And we got to see our TDPs and temperatures. So let's see if we can get Cyberpunk going now. Oh, wait, let's do uh, Cinebench. Cinebench first. Um, so Cinebench. Mm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Anti malware executable. Looks like uh, Windows may have been running something in the background for that test of time spike. Because it had the anti malware executable thing taking up 8% of our CPU. This, I think, is Windows. I think this is Windows Defender service right here, the anti malware executable task process. But it sometimes can slow down your benchmarking randomly. Now it's like, now it's not taking any of our resources. But anyway, okay, I think I think we're good to go now again. But that's probably why that run scored a little bit lower. Okay. Here we go. Cinemesh R20. And we'll also take a look at what our average clock speed is and what kind of TDP we're pulling. All right, so starting out... 115 watts of power. Holy crap. That is amazing. 115 watts of power. That is the highest TDP I've seen on a laptop this thin in a long, long time. Now we're, we're, now we're dropping down to 59 watts of power. And look at our temperatures. They are so low. This thing could easily sustain 80, 90 watts of power, I think. I don't know why it's not sustaining higher than this. But it, So that's the power limit in the Armory Crate. It was 115, and then... Wait, no, I think the Armory Crate power limit was higher than that, actually. But it was... But the long power limit is 60. So we're at the 60. We're at the long power limit. So 4780 for our first run. Let's see... Let's see what we get when we run this thing consistently. Um, still, that's a very good score for an Intel CPU in a laptop this thin and light. Um, it's it's very similar to what we were getting with the GP66 at a higher TDP. This time, we're at the long power limit for an extended period of time, uh, which means that we have reduced power going to the CPU compared to the initial big burst of power for the first 20 seconds or so. Now, if you undervolted this and if you raise the power limit above 60 in Intel XTU, if we can do that, we're going to see some crazy CPU performance from this machine. Because uh, we're only at 67 degrees <laughs> running at AVX workload. Awesome. Extremely good temperatures. Extraordinarily good temperatures on this machine right now. Um, that said, a lot of laptops in a CPU-only workload are pushing 80 watts, like the Strix SCAR 15. So 4454 for our second run. That's probably going to be closer to our throttled score. I would expect it to get about that pretty consistently. Notice there for a few seconds, it'll boost up to like 100 watts every time we start Cinebench. It did that last time too. Um, and we're averaging 3.5, 3.6... Now 3.3, 3.7. Our boost clock is bouncing around a little bit. Probably because our power limit I don't know, is probably fluctuating up and down a little bit. Oh man, if you undervolt this and you can raise the power limit a little bit, I think we're looking at some really, really delicious CPU performance from this laptop. Like, out of the box, I think this thing's going to be fairly... Um, it's going to be extremely good temperatures out of the box, but the performance, I feel like Asus limited the performance on this machine too much for the out of the box performance. Second run, 44.35. So I'm hoping Asus updates this with um, a power limit increase because I think we could probably push 80 watts consistently through the CPU and not run into any th thermal throttling or anything like that based on the temperatures I'm seeing so far. Okay. The M16 has liquid metal on it, right? Even with liquid metal, these temps are crazy good. Yeah, it's true. The reason why the temps are crazy good, though, is because the power limit's only 60. 
That's the reason why the temperatures are so good. Liquid metal, max fans, power limit set to 60. That's the result. Really, really, really good. Intel or AMD not in benchmarks, stable, failing problems. I think AMD and Intel can be both stable and fast. Um, but it just depends on the laptop and how the manufacturer sets it up. Some retailers don't have the graphic cards wattage given. How do I look that up? Since a lot of laptops come with various configurations. Um, check my spreadsheet link in the description, Jacob. I uh, 4486 for that run. Um, I go... Oh, I list almost all of the TDPs for all the GPUs currently on the market here. Let me just, I'll show you that spreadsheet and I'll show you where to find it. Um, so right here, this is linked in the video description down below, but you can see um, along here, I have the TDP listed for all the laptops I've been able to find it on. Um, so like Gigabyte A7, for example, RTX 3070 up to 140 watts, up to 65 watts. And if I don't know what the... Um, TDP is oftentimes I'll guess. And if it's a guess, I put a question mark after it. And then if I ever find confirmation of it, it'll be, it'll be, uh, I'll add it to the sheet. So I, I've actually updated the sheet like two or three times today, adding TDPs and benchmark numbers in that I found. So, um, but I constantly add an update to the sheet. Um, are the other, if, if, if you can't find it on the sheet and you, you still not sure, um, you can try using Google. Google will oftentimes, uh, you just Google the laptop name, the CPU and or the GPU, and then the TDP, type in TDP or uh, power limit or something. So 4554 on that run. So I think we're, we're averaging just, so far we're averaging just under 4,500. Um, but I'm pretty confident we could get an average closer to 5,000 uh, if we, if we undervolt it and increase the power limit. Isn't 60 watts not enough for the CPU? No, it's not enough to get the maximum performance for sure. Like I think 80 watts will give us closer to maximum performance. Uh, honestly, closer to 100 watts would probably give us max max performance. Like one, like the 115 watts that we saw earlier, that is probably maximum performance. Um, like that, that would allow us probably to run over four gigahertz on all cores consistently, um, if you could get it to run at that high of wattage. But I doubt, I doubt you'd be able to get it to run that high without overheating. So, okay, that's a good enough set. Forty-four sixty-nine. That's what I'm going to say is the average. And uh, let's go ahead and update the sheet now for this laptop. 4469. I'm just going to put that in for now. Um, and yeah, this is, that's solid. I'm going to give this, I think an 8.75 rating for right now, but I, I need to kind of test some more in games. I might adjust that rating later. Okay. Especially if you undervolt it and increase the power limit a little bit to to let that CPU run, you're talking some really, really great performance. It's really nice to see that the 1440p is becoming mainstream now. The GP66 will have a QHD option as well. Can't wait to grab that one. Should be the best performer for the money. Um, that I, I would love to see the GP66 with that. All right, let's try to run Cyberpunk now. We are on to Cyberpunk. So hopefully the goal here is that um, we don't have to download this again. We might have to do an update, but hopefully the update won't take too long. Creating local files, discovering existing files. This is good. This is all according to plan. Um, this will still take a couple minutes. So um so yeah, chat, how is it going? Let me go ahead and read some chat some more. Gizmo, need to test in DaVinci Resolve, rendering on battery versus with power. Mm. Yes. So uh, with DaVinci Resolve, the thing about that applica application, that's what I edit in my videos, um, you can utilize the GPU. So uh, it's gonna be a combination of CPU and GPU performance. 
and how high of the TDP you can use. I all I always have my laptop plugged in when I'm rendering in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm curious how well that would work, though. I'm pretty sure you'd kill the battery life very quickly rendering in DaVinci Resolve. It'd be like gaming. Alex, do you think the back exhaust blowing hot air into the screen is considering been considering the M16? I do not think it's a problem, Alex. Uh, 11800 or 11980 is the i9 worth the extra $300 with the uh, RTX 3080 on the X17? Um, so Damon, I went with the 11980 because I want the best. But uh, whether it's worth the $300 is yet to be seen. Uh, Dell did indicate to me that the uh, 11800H is going to be locked and the 11980 HK is going to be unlocked for overclocking and undervolting and stuff. So that's probably the biggest advantage, but maybe that'll be, maybe the rep was wrong. I don't know. Um, but if, if the cooling on the X17 is as good as I'm hoping it is, I think the 11980 HK w would probably be worth the extra money. And you'd probably get a nice boost in FPS, especially if you plan on keeping the laptop for a really long time. Um, but uh, it also depends on what games you play. If you don't play CPU-bound games, then it's probably not worth the extra money. Um, so uh, that's probably the way I would think about it. If you do, if you need more, if you could use more CPU power and you play CPU-sensitive games, then the 11980HK is probably worth it. Well, <laughs> oh no, it's still downloading an update. No. Okay, so we have to wait for this to download still. Uh, okay. M16 i7 3070, a good deal? I think it depends on the price. I'm not sure what the price would be. Hey, Gizmo, are you getting the MSI Z16 or the Acer Triton 500 mini LED? Mini LED. Um, so far, I don't have plans to do either of those laptops, Harambe. Hey Gizmo, can you test the spacebar? On my M16, the spacebar does not register the click when I press the bottom half. It does register if I click harder than normal. Okay, let's test the spacebar out. Oh, and we want to test the webcam too, right? So that's... Um, because we were talking about doing the webcam. So let me get the webcam order uh, opened up and then let's do... Uh, what's it called? Um, WordPad. Okay, so here we are. All right, I'm going to try pressing the space bar at different points. That worked. So I found, like, all right, let me show you on the screen so it's a little easier to see. Um, okay, so if I press here, if I press right here, the spacebar did not activate. Activates. 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 Oh, nope. So in the... If it, it like, I feel the shunk, the click down of the key, but it does not activate. In the bottom right corner and the bottom left, just, just the very corners. If I press a little bit harder, it activates still. But everywhere else I'm pressing is working just fine. But it's possible if I'm very careful to make it activate without going. But that's not a big deal. That's like that would probably never happen to me. And let me just try typing a bit. Yeah, no, this feels fine, and it's working just fine on my side. So I don't know. Maybe yours, uh, maybe your spacebar is on on your laptop is malfunctioning a bit. Okay, here is the webcam. That is a pretty solid webcam. Uh, it's a bit like the colors are there, but the detail is not amazing. It's lower resolution, pretty low resolution, but um, that's fine for a web set, uh, web service. I think, I think that's it's quite good. Uh, I I wouldn't say it's amazing. It's just solid. And I mean, the big thing is there's very minimal noise. It's just. The downside is the detail is kind of, it feels like there's some kind of filter over my face. But I don't, 
I don't know. Um, okay. So this is a test of the webcam with maximum fans enabled. How does it sound? Uh, this is me typing on the keyboard. And then this is me opening Armory Crate, clicking the mouse pad. Uh, and I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the fans to silent mode, and that is what it's. I'm gonna wait for the fans to go all the way down. Okay. Now this is what it sounds like with the fans on uh, low or silent mode. This is what it sounds like when I'm typing. And there you go. So that's a really solid webcam. I think most people would be happy with that webcam. Nothing amazing, but uh, it it would certainly function just fine for any kind of call or business meetings and stuff like that. Can I check the RAM timings? Um, I can't check the RAM timings, but I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do a test of the RAM during the live performance benchmarking. So, and I don't want to do any kind of testing while this is installing, and I just have time for Cyberpunk for tonight. But uh, come back for the live benchmarks, and I'll be doing a uh, a test of the RAM during that. So, should not expect much from a laptop webcam. Uh, yes, but. When the laptop webcam happens to be really good, it's so nice. It's just such a nice bonus. Um, like I really enjoyed having a MacBook Pro with a high quality webcam because you could like use that to film almost blog style videos, you know? Because the the camera is almost as clear as like an iPhone front cam or something. And it, it does look better like in business meetings and stuff if you have a higher quality camera in general. Easter Bunny says, I have ordered the Lenovo Legion 7. Ryzen 5900HX, RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabyte SSD. Should I wait for the M16? Uh, no, I think Easter Bunny, I think that's a good choice. Uh, the Legion 7 is a good choice if you want to pay that much because it's going to cost you a lot. And also... Um, if you prefer more performance, I think the Legion 7 will give you a bit more performance uh, in general. But it, it will it'll definitely weigh more. So not as portable. Uh, Deepak, when will you benchmark the Zephyrus S17? I currently don't have plans to benchmark the S17. Hey, Gizmo, should I get the Omen 15 i7 10th Gen 3060 or wait for the Legion 5 Pro? Um, that's up to you, Aniket. Um, the nice thing about the Omen 15T, at least right now, i7 10th Gen 3060, is it's on sale. It's a nice discount on it right now. Uh, Nick says, I've ordered the Alienware X17 maxed out. Can't wait to get it. Me too, Nick. I'm really excited about it. I really want to see how uh, Black Desert Online plays with it. That's a game I'm playing a lot, and it's a very CPU-bound game, and that should be the best CPU performance in a laptop, so really looking forward to trying that out. Um, and also, obviously, performance in other games, too. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the X17. It should be great. Thank you. $2,500 USD it did cost. Okay. Um, that's a pretty solid price point, Easter Bunny, actually, for Allegiant 7. So I think that's uh, probably a good choice to just keep that. I don't know. It's hard to say, though. I want to order the X17 badly. I'm stuck waiting for the 360 hertz screen, though. Mm, gotcha. Sam Y. Hey. For how much did you buy your X17 Gizmo? I bought mine for 39.50 euros in France. Um, camera feed is shaking a lot. Sorry, I'm probably bumping it with my hand. Uh, so I bought my X17 for, I think it was right around $4,000 USD, something like that. Hello, I would like to ask, what's the difference between a Strix G15 and 17 besides the screen? Um, there is very little differences, JJ Hernandez. A lot of the ports are the same. Um, the heat pipe setup is almost identical. Uh, my main difference between my Strix Scar and the Strix G17 I reviewed is um, the Strix G17 had slightly better temperatures. So, is Red Dead Redemption story game uh, or online game? Red Dead Redemption is a story game primarily. I think there's an online portion to it, though. If you want to play with other people, I believe there's like a kind of a GTA, a Wild Wild West style online portion. I haven't done that, though. I just played a lot of the storyline for Red Dead Redemption. 
Let's see how aliens will surprise humans with new laptops. Yes. <laughs> Give me that alien tech. Uh, I'm getting it for work and gaming, so it's interesting to see Alienware is trying to make their laptops as thin and light as possible, still beefy, but less than the Area 51M. Yeah, well, the the Alienware X17 and 15 are not very light, but they are very thin. So, yeah, but they'll they'll look really thin and light, but they'll actually be fairly heavy. <laughs> How is the keyboard compared to the XPS's keyboard? Um, I have not tried a recent XPS keyboard. The last XPS keyboard I tried was from a couple of years ago and it was solid. Uh, feels pretty similar to this keyboard from what I remember, but they probably have improved it since. Thoughts on the Aorus 15 P130 watt? Uh, Lincoln Highway, I've had some really good feedback from other people who've bought the Aorus 15 P130 watt. Um, so it should be a really good choice for people that want more performance and don't mind a thicker laptop um, and still want a reasonable price. But uh, as far as performance per dollar, I think the MSI GP66 will give you a little bit more performance because it has a higher base TDP of 125 versus the Aorus 15P's base TDP is 115. So that, that base TDP will help boost the performance and dual load CPU, GPU type games. Um, but uh, the other thing that the Aorus 15P has, though, is better ports. The GP66 has uh, limited ports. No USB-C, especially. That's a big deal. And no full-size SD card slot, and the Aorus has both of those. Um, been thinking about switching from my Zephyrus G15 3070 Ryzen 9 for this M16. What's the difference with Ryzen and Intel chips? Is Ryzen better? Will I see better performance? Um, so my... I think that's a question I've gotten multiple times so far. Um, maybe I should make a comparison with the Zephyrus G15 and this M16. But um, I think for gaming focus, the Zephyrus G15 is going to be better in general because it's got a uh, 3070 for the same price. Is the S17 worth paying more over the Strix Scar 17? I'm not sure. I, I don't know all the details. I have not tested the S17 yet, and I haven't seen detailed benchmarks on the S17 yet, so I'm not sure. It's fun to see Cyberpunk is so buggy and optimized that it has become the benchmark to test for any new hardware. Does it run Cyberpunk? LOL. Yeah. Yeah, Cyberpunk is really um, a good game to test, in my opinion, because it has RTX and DLSS. And those are going to be very future-focused gaming um, technology. So a lot of future games, I think, will have RTX and DLSS in implemented. So Cyberpunk is one of the best indicators of potential future performance for games in general. Um, Anthony, also, uh, but hi, hi, er, er, welcome to the stream. Uh, Anthony says, hey, I'm only going to stay on the United States until the 24th of July. Should I wait for the new AMD laptops in this month or I'm not going to have enough time for the new AMD laptops? Um, Anthony, I don't know. Uh, if you're limited until July 24th, you have to keep in mind that a lot of the laptops, like let's say you try to buy the Lenovo Legion 7, right? It's coming out soon. It should hopefully be out in the next week or two. Um, even if you order it, sometimes it takes three weeks to a month to come in. So if you're heading out on July, if you're leaving by July 24th, you might want to focus on getting a laptop in sooner than later so you can at least have a week or two to test it out in case it has problems or um, anything that malfunctions on it. Because then you can always send it back in. Um, or return it and get a different model or whatever, get a replacement. Because if there, if you run into a problem on your gaming laptop, it will usually be right away at the beginning, and then you can return it and exchange it. Um, so in general, I would say to try to get it at least a couple weeks early before you leave. Um, so you can always return it and get a different laptop if you need to. The camera is shaking because I'm booping it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Probably driving crazy. Okay, I'm gonna try to really, really try not to. Um, hey Gizmo, I'm I'm like I'm getting into it, you know, and I'm <laughs> moving so much. The Best Buy gaming laptop for sale sale video was great. Would would love to see that for Newegg. Mm, yeah, uh, EU. I think I think uh, I think Newegg would probably want to sponsor that kind of video too. So I might actually take more time next time I do it, uh, and like include all the TDPs and then try to collect benchmarks for all the laptops that I talk about too, so that I can 
do like a rough comparison sheet of all those machines. QHZ laptop is future proof for upcoming AAA games or full HD laptop is enough for gaming for like three to four games, three to four years. Yeah, so if you get a QHD laptop, you just, what you may have end up having to do is just reduce the resolution or the settings um, if you want to still play a QHD you know, in the future eventually. Like, you know, technology always advances, right? Like no matter what, three, five years from now, there will always be some game there will be ridiculously high settings or something, and you'll have to reduce the uh, reduce the settings to be able to play it. Um, but uh, at least if you want to hit it at the right frame rate or whatever, it, it just depends, you know. Uh, but no matter what, I think I think in general a full HD, um, just playing at full HD, you'll be able to future proof out for a longer period of time, because QHD is like a lot a lot more GPU intensive. QHD is the perfect display for all laptops. Anything more than that and is negligible since your eyes wouldn't see those extra pixels. Yeah, I agree. Can you check if 1200p is blurry? Um, it should not be. But um, let's just go ahead and switch to it. Yeah, no, it looks good. 1200p still looks pretty solid. Um, the main thing is I have also Windows scaling. By default, window scaling is set to 125. So if I set it to 100%, this looks pretty much native 1200p right now. Uh, it's very difficult to see any pixels. Like it's just a tiny bit, a tiny bit reduction in detail. So I definitely think you'll be able to downsample games, no problem, down to uh, 1200p. Uh, if you need to say like in the future, future proof your machine a bit more. Okay, so Cyberpunk's almost done downloading. We're at 58 out of 60 gigs. When is the Asus Strix G Advantage Edition benchmark? Uh, soon, safe. I've got so many things I got to do. Uh, it's just I ended up buying this lap. I are able to pick up this laptop today, so I had to. I wanted to get the live. Live unboxing done first. Um, also, and to test out this. So one one downside of the Strix Advantage Edition is it's only a 512 gig SSD. So I had to go get this SSD, external SSD, so that I could install all the games so I could even run. If you'll notice, I've, n I've never done a live benchmark on a laptop that I bought that had a 512 gig SSD. I've only done one terabyte SSDs because otherwise I can't run all the applications because it's about one terabyte of games that I install for my benchmark runs. Is QHD laptop, if I play games in 1080p resolution, they look blurry? Uh, gamer official boy, our game, gamer boy official, um, it will, it'll be a reduction in detail, but it won't be very blurry, um, except for maybe a game like Warzone. Warzone kind of has uh, resolution scaling issues where it's more sensitive to that. But uh, you can still play at 1080p and get up frame rates, but it's just it's more noticeable than on a lot of other games. I can try doing a close up for you guys with uh, Cyberpunk here. We'll try dropping it to 12, 1200p at one point. Y'all have any opinion on the Legion 5 Pro 3070 or the M16 3070 i7? Um, so I think the Legion 5 Pro will give you more performance. But the uh, the M16 will be much more portable, or at least it'll be lighter and it'll be thinner. Do a live stream of the MSI i9 11980 HK RTX 3070 full HD 300 hertz. Um, I may do that. We'll see. Let's go ahead and get our manual mode enabled again. That may be a future. A future thing to test. Er, er says, hey Gizmo, I got the Legion 7 with the 5900HX and 3080. It seems to run really well, but I can't wait to see how it compares to other laptops. Cool, man. That's awesome. I think that's probably, that's a great, I think that's a great laptop to consider, or a great laptop as well. 1200p with DLSS on quality might be pretty good. Yeah, that's probably what I would run this game at, most likely. Um, huh. 
I'm noticing like a, a bit of a, a mouse input leg. I'm guessing it's because we have VSync on or something. No, VSync's off. Let's try full screen. Weird. Just a bit of an input leg. So let's try everything. RTX enabled, and then we do uh, balanced mode. That's the way I do QHD tests, at least. So we're going to start out with this. We'll do our benchmark run for Cyberpunk. Why does FPS drop when I turn RTX on? Because RTX takes a lot of uh, demand. What's the TDP limit on this thing? It's up to 95 watts. It's 80 to 95, 80 base. Are the flickering lights reflecting off of the screen annoying in person? Uh, I don't see any flickering lights on my screen. It's interesting that the Moray effect is very minimal in this. Okay, so we have an RTX 3060. It's a lower TDP. Let's see how well it does in this test. I'm thinking we'll need to lower the settings more to get a playable frame rate, which makes sense. We probably have to go down to uh, like 1080p or 1200p to be able to to get the uh, the frame rate to be in a playable range. 23 to 21 right now. Oh, weird. For some reason, the fan is not. It didn't. It didn't reset the fans or something. So let's say that seems very low. Okay, now it's jumping up more. I was like, I'm not hearing the fans. The fans should be going right now. <laughs> and these frame rates are very low. The frick, oh, the flickering lights are the LEDs down here. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, I didn't even notice them. <laughs> yeah, but I imagine they could be a bit annoying uh, at times. Huh. The FPS didn't go up that much. Interesting. Let me just double check the settings, make sure that our, all our settings are good. Yep. RTX Ultra on balance. Okay, here we go. So we're getting a couple more FPS. Okay, 26, 25. I definitely would not want to play at this FPS. You you need to set the, the settings a bit lower. Also, take a look at our TDP. So we're bouncing around like 85, 93, 94. All right, 99% GPU utilization. That's really good. That means we're not CPU bound at all, which this game is usually not. It's a very GPU heavy game. Our clock speed's really good at like 1800. Now it's 16. It's jumping up. It's jumping down. The clock speed's kind of jumping around, which is pretty normal as it tries to, to find the optimal clock speed to boost to. Our temperatures are very solid right now. 66, 61. Yeah, it's still not playable. So we got 24, 21. 2421. So let's try reducing. Uh, we'll not. We'll we'll not turn off anything else. We'll just try doing ultra performance with RTX on ultra, and let's see. Let's see what we get. So in general, I think an RTX 3060 is not going to be quite enough if you want to play the latest games on maximum settings at QHD resolution, especially 16 by 10 QHD, 1600p, because it's going to be quite a bit of extra demand put on the GPU that a lower watt, well, a 3060 just doesn't have the, the tensor cores and RT cores to be able to handle it very well. OK, so we're hitting 36 now that we have it on ultra performance. It still looks pretty good. But it, honestly, I, I tend to, I would rather optimize 
the frame rate by going to like a 1200p resolution. Um, reducing the resolution rather than going with DLSS this low, because I think it looks just a tad sharper usually. I mean, this still looks really good. And this is this is borderline playable. We're averaging 36 FPS, 26 are 1% lows. But I, again, this is this is an example where a 3060 is probably not quite, just like in the Legion 7, just like in the Legion 7, a 3060 is not quite enough to push QHD resolution maximum settings gaming. So 3525 for that run. Um, let's try low. Let's try uh, let's try setting it down to 1080p. So we'll do actual 1080p for this part. Oh yeah, and I don't have any mouse input lag now either. Like it's being very responsive again. Okay, and we'll go down to quality. So ultra with quality DLSS. So this is my standard settings for my benchmarks when I do my benchmarks for uh, comparing versus other laptops at 1080p. Is the iGPU mode on the Armory Crate like a muck switch? No, it's not like a muck switch because it, it, it doesn't actually bypass the integrated GPU. Um, it's just NVIDIA Optimus. It's a way to basically ensure that you get good battery life is the way I would view it. Okay, so here we are. 44 FPS now. This is going to be play this looks like it's going to be playable at this at these settings. Basically 1080p um straight 1080p looks looks going to like it's going to be pretty playable. That said, I do prefer going closer in in this game. I do prefer getting closer to like 50 60 FPS cuz you're aiming a lot and everything. So, if I was playing on this, I would still probably reduce the settings a bit further like you can turn off just some of the uh ray tracing like um just like the more noticeable ray tracing for example you can turn off like the background ray tracing so not all of the environmental sources are being ray traced okay so we got 4232 that's decent i think it's just so now we're at 1200p Let's try one more time at 1200p and see what we're looking at. Because this is actually the resolution people would play at. Vin, Vin Hang, I need a review from you ASAP. Can you enable HDR in games? Um, it depends on the game, I believe. But uh, you, need, you need an HDR monitor also to handle it. Rufiat 303, should I buy this laptop? Um, honestly, if I were to be like recommending, should you buy this M16 versus the Zephyrus G15 or between those two, me as a gamer, I go, I'm leaning towards a Zephyrus G15 recommendation instead of this M16, uh, because you get better GPU performance. You get an RTX 3070, like you'd actually be able to play this game at QHD resolution. And have it be playable frame rates at QHD, you know? So uh, it's just the RTX 3060 is going to be a bit more limited. Now, if you are looking for CPU-bound game performance, that may be different. You may get better performance out of this machine. Well, we'll see. we got to do more testing. So it kind of is going to come down to what games you want to play, um, what, what types of games, CPU-bound games versus GPU-bound games, um, and then... You know, do you need a webcam? I think that's going to be a big, a big factor for a lot of people. They're maybe willing to sacrifice some GPU performance to get a webcam. How is the display panel compared to the G15? This display is definitely brighter and more vibrant than the G15 panel. Um, I can tell it's a noticeable increase in brightness. I haven't measured it yet. I've got a Spider Five. I've got a Spider Five Elite. I'll be measuring with for the review. Um, So you can see that when we go to 1200p resolution, it's a pretty noticeable bump down in FPS uh, versus regular 1080p because it's like another 15% resolution to render, something like that. Okay, so let's load in and play through a section of the game real quick. Let's see, I believe this is one of the sections I always play through. 
when is the gaming review of the G15 Advantage coming out? Um, I'll be doing the the live stream of the benchmark soon. Uh, I think definitely this week. I'll try to hit that up. Okay, so right now we're at 1200p RTX on Ultra DLSS and quality. Um, and then we get a new average there. So now we get new average figured out. So we got 40 FPS, 36 for our 1% our lows. Let's kill one more robot before we switch. So this, I mean, this is playable. I think people would play this. But it's, you know, they would play at this resolution and settings and it's smooth enough to aim, but it's not like ideal. Like, I think ideally you're definitely going to want to get like another 10 to 15 more FPS to play this game, especially in certain areas of the game where it becomes um, a little bit harder to run. Okay, cool. So let's run, uh, switch to, let me just try optimizing our settings a little bit. Um, like maybe we go down to performance. Well, let's set, let's do ray tracing on medium. And we'll try going down to performance on our, our DLSS here. Okay, so now we're getting 59 FPS, 60 FPS. Oh, I can tell it's, it's much smoother now. Easier to aim. I keep sprinting and canceling. Okay, so that's definitely see this is this is playable. This is this is what I would play the game at, and it still looks really really good. I think. Um, let's switch one more scene, and then I'll do a conclusion kind of wrap up of my thoughts on the laptop so far. Does it have a muck switch? Uh, no, it does not. Does this laptop have overheating issues? Uh, I so far the temperatures are insanely good. Um, like we're at sixty-eight and seventy-three right now. And uh, let's see what we get for FPS for through this section. We're getting higher FPS than we were out in the desert. 70 right now. Huh. This is very smooth. Clearly, clearly, as long as you optimize the settings, I think that's the thing. If you get an RTX 3060, you can still enjoy the latest games. You just got to be willing to tweak the settings, you know? That's kind of my take on it now for an RTX 3060 after having reviewed a bunch of them. It's like, it's not like it's even that big of a difference, you know, like, like in terms of the actual gameplay experience, you put them side by side, it's gonna be hard to notice the difference, you know? Uh, but a, a fine tuned eye might notice the difference. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to get a more expensive, spend a little bit more money or get something that's thicker and has a higher TDP. So, What's up, Nathan? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so let's do a conclusion wrap up for this laptop for the initials imp initial impressions. Okay. Let me just pull this up here. All right. So we can set this over to the side. All right, so the Zephyrus M15, extremely similar to the Zephyrus G15. Um, the CPU performance is seems to be solid initially, at least in Cinebench. Uh, runs insanely cool when you're running CPU-bound stuff, but the power limit is set a bit lower. That's why. 
Um, I think as long as we can, as long as I can raise the power limit on the CPU uh, and undervolt it, I think we might get extremely good, very top tier CPU performance. But out of the box, the CPU performance is just kind of, eh, is decent. The temperatures are extremely good, but the performance itself is, eh. You know, so I'm hoping with some tweaking, we can get some truly superb CPU performance from this machine. Um, as far as the GPU performance goes, uh, haven't done our full set of tests yet, but it's kind of as expected, like a lower TDP RTX 3060. Um, you're going to be able to do great QHD gaming if you're willing to lower the settings in the more demanding games. Um, or reduce the resolution down to 1200p, 1920 by 1200p. I really like the extended display. I really, really enjoy the really bright display. This, this display is really, really bright. The webcam seemed very decent. The, the keyboard and trackpad were truly uh, excellent. Um, you're going to have a great time typing on this thing. Uh, using it for general web browsing is going to be great. The port selection um, has its strengths. We have Thunderbolt 4, so if you need Thunderbolt, another giant advantage over some of the other options out there right now. Um, thermally speaking, the temperatures on the CPU and GPU were truly excellent. Um, if anything, we probably could have a higher TDP on the GPU and CPU and still have decent temperatures because I only saw like 75-ish degrees on the CPU and GPU at the high end, and oftentimes it was in the 60s, um, at least when we're on max fans. Now, uh, so overall, I think the, the main downside to this machine is the extra price, but you for that price over, say, like, so I, I think the best comparison of this machine in terms of performance is going to be the Zephyrus G15 with the RTX 3060, okay? The RTX 3060 is a very capable GPU for 1080p gaming, but for QHD gaming, it's just not quite enough to maximize all the game settings and still have fluid fluid game. That's the main downside to this machine. So as long as you're flexible with the game settings, then an RTX 3060 is enough. Otherwise, I highly recommend going for a 3070 version if you want to go for true QHD gaming with close to max settings or if, if not like completely maxed out settings and still having a great experience. So that's kind of my take. My initial impressions on this thing is is very good in a lot of ways but you're definitely paying that extra premium price because I think it costs about 300 to 350 more than the Zephyrus G15 with a 3060. So that's a pretty hefty price to pay, in my opinion, for these features, but also still might be worth it for a lot of people out there. If you really need that webcam, you really need, uh, you want that brighter screen, a little more vibrant, um, and the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, the, and the Thunderbolt 4. If you need all of those things, then the $350 upgrade is probably worth it. But I just wish I could get a 3070 version, say for like 2100 or something like that. That that would, I'd probably recommend that over this one, if you can swing it. Um, I just haven't seen that for sale yet. Okay, and I answer a couple of questions, and then I'm gonna end the stream. Um, Rufiat asks, is eight gigs enough graphics memory for gaming? Yes, I do believe eight gigs is enough for most games, especially 1080p gaming, QHD gaming, still for most games you're all right. But some games like um, Watch Dogs Legion, you might want more. Um, but so far, I've not had any problems. Um, if you want to do VR gaming, I do recommend getting 16 gigs of memory uh, if you're going to do really high resolution VR gaming at least. But even then, you just, yeah, anyway. In general, 8 gigs is enough for now, at least. It's not going to be as uh, future proof, though as something like a um, 16 gigs. Nick asks, do you think the X17 will be able to mac, max out on any game? I mean, it is premium laptop, so I'm assuming that you'd be able to. Sorry for, for a stupid question I'm from Apple Ecosystem. So Nick, if you want to know what an X17 gaming performance uh, will look like, at least in the vast majority of games, um, check out my MSI GE76 benchmarks because that has a very high watt RTX 3080 in it. Um, and I'm expecting just a little bit more performance from the X17 than the GE76. So you'll be able to correlate a lot of those benchmarks across and then be like, okay, so uh, probably add like 5 five to 15% to most of those benchmarks um, for the X17, but we'll see. Uh, hard to estimate exactly. How does the Intel CPU compare to the G15 AMD CPU? Uh, the, the 
the CPUs will be very similar for day-to-day -day use and productivity use, um, but I believe the Intel CPU will generally perform a little bit better in CPU-bound games. I, uh, but I need more testing required. Just that's the caveat, more testing required. So far, the Intel 11th gen has performed very well in games, but that was also with a MUX laptop. This has no MUX, so I need to do testing with that type of setup. Hey Gizmo, for information, turbo mode allows a lot higher PL1 on this. Strangely, Asus is mistakenly 60 watts in manual mode. Okay, uh, gamers in IT paradise. I appreciate that info. That is a big deal, actually. Let me try switching that to turbo mode and running Cinebench one more time while I do this, answer some more questions. Um, oh, I got to plug in the external hard drive. Okay. Um, okay, what about the exhaust blowing directly on the screen? I don't think that's a concern, Dan. Well, I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, does the bottom of the laptop feel hot? Uh, if you're going to have this in your lap, it's going to feel hot if you're going to do intensive things. Um, so it might require you sitting with your legs kind of like out at an angle and then just having the laptop kind of resting there. Um, but it's not, it's not too bad. Is the fan noise loud? It's it's about as loud as most laptops on a Max fan. So around 56 decibels, I believe. Um, it's like holding a hair dryer to your IPS panel, but okay, do purchase through the associated link. ZLF, I don't think it's it's not that bad. A hair dryer gets a lot hotter, man. And Asus would not have designed it this way um, to cause, although it's going to cause, like, I have not seen anyone have issues with their Zephyrus G15, and that's been out for almost six months yet. So, I mean, that's a good preliminary test to show. And plus, there's been a lot of previous models that have had uh, exhaust blowing on displays that I've, I've not seen a consistent pattern of screens having damage or anything from the exhaust going on the screen. So, um, I... I yeah, like I think I think the uh, in general, I would tend to recommend the 3070 model of this unit over the 3060 if you want to maximize QHD gaming. I think that's the main the main performance downside is that it's just not quite enough GPU performance. Okay, um, real quick, Cinebench R20 with turbo mode. Let's see what kind of performance we get because if if that performs better, that's good to know. Um, this will be the last test before before we get out of here. Sorry for the bait and switch. That that new info changed things. I got to find out for sure now. Um, yes. Okay. So ninety. Wow, ninety three degrees Celsius right now. One hundred and fifteen watts. Uh, the fans are kicking up because the fans were not at max. We were we're at 4.4 gigahertz now. We're running 4.4 gigahertz solid. We're at 107 watts. Now we're at 90 watts. So the long power limit now is set to 90 watts. It looks like in turbo mode. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. 90 watts. We should see some truly excellent benchmarks numbers coming from this now. Okay, 5101. Uh, so ZLF, if if you have any evidence that it's a bad design, that you have damaged laptops from the exhaust going on the screen, just email it to me because I have never seen any evidence that it's dangerous for the screen. So if, like, I'm serious. I, I want to know if it's not good. Like, I, I authentically want to know. Uh, but as far as I know, there's no evidence that it damages the screens, uh, having the exhaust go to the display. So, and uh, because I've not seen any evidence of it, and because Asus has designed it purposely like this, um, it should be within the manufacturer's spec that it's safe. Uh, that's my best understanding of the situation. And I don't care if you use my links or not. I care about trying to help people. So...
also let's switch to this mode here okay so i was running it 4891 so this should be this should be a long power limit like so, so we were at 115 watts looks like the cpu package power is dropping now 73.8 watts 74 watts I wonder if the long, long, like it's almost just like three stages because it dropped down to 90 watts for an extended period of time during the initial run. It went from like 115 down to 90, down to 74 now, 76. Our temperatures are pretty good. 72, 75. It says peel one power limit is 75 now. Like on this HW info, 75. 135 to 75. Okay. So with turbo mode, we're hitting 3.8 gigahertz. 3.7. And we got 4,700. So I think we're jumping up on average from 4,460 to about 4,700 running it in turbo mode instead of, um, instead of manual mode. Will I test the webcam? Yeah, I tested the webcam already. Just remember he told us to remind him. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nerdy. Yeah, I, I, I tested it already. So this will be the last run. Let's see what this gets. 3.7 gigahertz. This will be kind of my throttled score average. I'm pretty sure this is going to be pretty indicative of the performance long term. Sound test. Oh, man. I want to do a sound test. It'll only take a second. <laughs> I want to test the speakers. Okay. I need to add that to the I need to add that to my unboxing agenda. Cause I can also test the speakers while Cyberpunk downloads. Okay, so forty eight forty three. So right around forty seven, forty eight hundred uh with turbo mode. That's a lot better. That that makes me a lot happier, I guess, about about the CPU performance. So, hmm, okay, good for ASUS. So uh, better for ASUS, but I wish they didn't get manual mode. But maybe they're worried about people setting low fans and setting a high power limit. All right, let me hear the speakers here. They sound, they sound solid, but not. I wouldn't say better than the G15. They sound quieter than the G15, but maybe it needs to be set to dynamic in in here. Let me try this now. Mm. Okay, it's definitely a lot louder when you set it to dynamic. So that would be my recommendation, uh, setting it to dynamic. You'll get more volume out of it. Okay, so there you guys go. I did a sound test. Retest the Cinebench for you. Thanks so much for the, the pointers, uh, chat. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Um, you can't hear anything? It's because the mic doesn't pick it up. But it. I would say, so I would say the speakers are probably identical to the G15 or very, very similar to the G15. Um, Bazio, you probably didn't have the G15 set to the right sound profile for the bass, uh, or maybe you're just more picky than I am for the bass, but, um, I, it doesn't seem like much of a difference. It seems like solid overall speakers in general for, um, on both the G15 and the M16. So I will be doing more tests, everyone, in the live performance benchmarks live stream. Thanks so much for tuning in everything. 
Uh, thanks for so much. So, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm really exhausted and tired, as you can tell by the way I'm talking. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everyone. Hi, Justin, by the way. I'm doing well. Peace.